The future of track and field is employment over sponsorship. Welcome back to the Running Through Podcast YouTube page, everyone. My name is Justin Horniker. Nick Willis had been all over Twitter, not all over, he made a tweet two days ago announcing that Tuesday, which is today, he would have an important announcement regarding his future. He had a bunch of Adidas spikes laid out all over the floor, and many people, myself included, that this would possibly be a Nick Willis retirement announcement. Now, Nick Willis doesn't necessarily seem like the type of person to just announce his retirement like that, especially in the build-up to 2021, with 2020 ending how it has, um, assuming that there isn't a track field season, which, who knows, the Diamond League... Uh, the Eugene Diamond League meet just announced today that it's going to be moving to October. So, who knows? Everything is kind of up in the air. It's flippy floppy. This is track and field as we know it. Races are going to be postponed, rescheduled, moved around. In a time when that uncertainty is going to potentially be impacting athletes' sponsorship deals in terms of incentives, in terms of times run, in terms of amount of meets they've competed in, it's a real up-in-the-air world as a track and field athlete. So that is why, to me, it's not really a surprise that Nick Willis has left Adidas and signed with Tracksmith as a quote-unquote amateur runner. He is no longer sponsored. He's now employed by Tracksmith, which is a really interesting deal. Him and Mary Kane both announced today that they are signing, that they are being employed, signing a contract with Tracksmith to be employees. And this could potentially set off alarms and fireworks throughout the track and field community. Because the thing is that majority of sponsorship deals are very much incentive-based. Not to say that there isn't certain incentives in their employment contract, but it takes a lot of this guesswork out of it. A lot of this that times have to be run in a world, especially leading up into 2021, where we don't know what opportunities there will be to run these times, how many meets there will be, and how fit you can get if we have to go back into lockdown again, go back into stay at home, especially for, it's just, it's hard to say. We don't even know how the rest of 2020 is going to look as far as we are concerned in the track and field world. So it's super interesting. And then this could potentially pave a new way for different companies to get involved. We're living in a sports landscape now where revenues are going to be dropping like a lead balloon. Their NBA announced that 40% of their revenue is from gate receipts. Track and field are used to working with the stringent budget, but if there aren't gate receipts from track and field meets, <laughs> that's if you're following the NBA where 40% of your revenue is from those gate receipts, and then now all of a sudden there are none, be coupled with the fact that companies are taking a hit everywhere. Marketing dollars are not going to be spent the same way they were pre-pandemic for a little while. So companies are going to be less incentivized to put more money into athletes who are maybe on the fringe of being competitive. So obviously the 100 meter runners who are running 9.9, 9.8, the 5k guys who are running like 13, 20 will be sponsored. But those guys that are in that 10, 10, almost sub 10 range, those guys that are in like the 13, 50 range who are just on that edge of being elite, um, who need time in the sport to improve and keep getting better. Maybe you're a late bloomer. Those opportunities are going to be fewer and far between. And we may be running into the problem where, as we were before, people aren't going to have as much of a life in the sport. Uh, these athletes that are fringe athletes need time to develop. And in some countries you see that where there is less of an incentive to run fast all the time. And here in the States, we just don't have that culture of the elites can advance and the sub elites have to make that choice. Do they want to make some sacrifices to, or maybe they even don't have that chance because they have a family to support. It makes things a lot tougher. So. If we open up this avenue of sponsorship, of benefactorship almost, it's kind of like the old 70s and 60s model where 
Prefontaine was one of Nike's first employees when they still had to be amateurs. So Nike was paying Steve Prefontaine to be a Nike athlete, to be a Nike ambassador. And he would just go around wearing Nikes and to Nike events and pretty much doing what they're asking Mary Kane and Nick Wills to do. They're employing you for your name so that you can give things back to the company, but it's more of a give and take than it is, say, being sponsored and just asking you to wear things around. Uh, and I, I like that model a lot better because I think for me, if I'm looking, if I'm an athlete and I'm looking for a company to sponsor with or to partner with, I'm looking for someone who's going to be open to my ideas as well as someone who has more of a marketing mind. And if we're looking at these fringe athletes and maybe some who aren't as social media savvy or aren't as inclined to put their voice out there, working with a company directly maybe gives you more access to people who can help you with that or people that can do the social media side for you so that you do have a web presence, that you do have a marketing presence, which inherently helps those brands. So this becomes a little bit inside baseball as far as that goes, but Tracksmith hits a real hit and run here. Everything they've done lately from sponsoring runners, uh, anyone who qualified for the Olympic trials to give them gear to wear, working with local track clubs to facilitate that gear. So here in Kansas City, our KCTC guys and girls that made the Olympic trials all had Tracksmith gear with the little KC logo right here. Awesome. Everything they're doing is just like right on the mark for me. And they're really hitting it out of the park. This is a big win for them as well. Mary Kane, Nick Wills. I can't think of better ambassadors for your brand than those two. They're always on point with what they have to say. They're very thoughtful, very engaged with the running community. And I think they've really hit on something that other brands can take away and build off of. So those are my thoughts on Nick Wills not retiring, him and Mary Kane signing with Tracksmith, being employed by Tracksmith, and having all the security that comes from that. Thank you guys for watching. If you like my thoughts, give me a thumbs up. If you like my videos, if you enjoy that, if you want to see more, go ahead and subscribe. I'm going to link the article that I wrote regarding the subject down below if you want a little more insight in words um, and a little bit less rambly. That'd be great too. Anyways, talk to you guys soon. Happy running.